Hello, this is Hannah, and welcome to the first ever Becoming Who You Are podcast. Each episode focuses on a topic to do with personal development and self-growth. For more information about Becoming Who You Are, you can look at the website, which is at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also email me with your questions and comments at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. I want to use the first episode to give an introduction to Becoming Who You Are, to talk a little about what it is, what it might mean for you, a bit about my background, and why I found personal development really invaluable. Becoming Who You Are is a website I started in 2010. It was initially a blog and a small list of personal development resources that I found useful, and it's grown substantially over the last almost two years. Today it still has a blog and an expanded resources page. In addition to this, I've created a sentence completion course which is available from the site and which people are enjoying right now, and we have a thriving Facebook community too. So if you missed it at the beginning, that's www.becomingwhoyouare.net, and if you hop onto Facebook and search Becoming Who You Are, it's the page with the pink butterfly logo. I created Becoming Who You Are for many reasons. I'm incredibly passionate about personal development myself and want to share that with people. The time at which I started my personal development journey was also a time during which I was incredibly broke, stressed and stretched time-wise, and I quickly realised there wasn't much out there for people who are broke, stressed and stretched, but who still want to explore more about themselves. Now it's more of a general resource to help people get started with their own journeys, whoever they are, wherever they've come from and wherever they're going. There's a lot of mythology surrounding self-growth and personal development out there, perhaps not unfairly because a lot of charlatans are also out there offering things they can't possibly provide. However, I think it's a shame that wanting to engage in personal development and wanting to know more about yourself and who you really are is still a slight taboo. So I guess becoming who you are is a sort of leg up over the wall. It's a starting point from which you can create your own path and destination with support that you need. The topics that we cover at Becoming Who You Are are varied and range from articles about different psychological theories to mini-series focusing on certain subjects like giving and receiving feedback. I try to update the blog twice a week, and you can search for articles on a particular topic using the website's category system. Before I talk about the things that have influenced and shaped Becoming Who You Are, I'll say a little about myself. I've been really interested in personal development for five years or so, and have read around a huge number of topics during this time, including nonviolent communication, internal family systems, bioenergetics, Myers-Briggs, the psychodynamical Freudian approach, and the person-centered approach. I'm currently training to become a counsellor, and the blog is as much for me to explore my own ideas as it is to share them with others. I have three principles that I believe are the core of my approach to this website and to my attitude towards self-development in general. I also call this my mini-festo. These principles are, number one, you're not broken and you don't need to be fixed. Number two, the phrases self-improvement and self-help don't improve or help anyone. Number three, we all know what's best for ourselves. No one else can tell us that. I say that you're not broken and you don't need to be fixed because, well, I don't believe you are. We all develop our own ways of coping with the world we grow up in. Some of these ways are more beneficial than others, but at the core of these behaviours is a need for self-protection, not brokenness. I dislike the phrases self-improvement and self-help because they imply that there's something wrong with us and therefore violate principle number one of the manifesto. There's also an air of self-flagellation about these phrases, and I think they can leave people chasing an unobtainable, ideal version of themselves. Number three, we all know what's best for ourselves, and no one else can tell us that. It comes from the belief that we all have unique experiences of life, and we are all unique people. Even though it might not feel like it sometimes, I think we are all trying to be the best we can be with what we've got and in the situation we find ourselves in. No one else knows what it's like to be us and see life through our eyes. Therefore, I don't think it's helpful for us to assume that we know what's best for someone else or that they know what's best for us. I endeavour to live by these statements, both in the content I create for the website and in my personal life. And this ties in with why I think personal development is important, or at least why it's been important to me. I think personal development is about getting to know ourselves, 
learning more about what makes us tick, what our thoughts and feelings mean, and why we are who we are. It's about examining our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, revealing the layers of conditioning and who we are underneath them. That's why I called the website Becoming Who You Are, because for me, that's what personal development is about. It's not about improving, bettering, or helping ourselves. It's about getting to know ourselves, the real us. This includes the good stuff and the stuff that we're not so happy about or proud of. Change might happen along the way as we become more aware, and I know I certainly started my own journey with these ideas of who I would be when it was finished. But little did I know at that time, and it came as quite a shock to realize that I am the way I am, and that the most liberating thing I can do for myself is to accept that, rather than try and change it. Little did I also know that there is no end to this journey. We will never be the person that I think many people expect themselves to be on the other side of personal development, filled with only serenity, peace, and so-called good thoughts, walking around with an aura of enlightenment radiating from their being. We're human, and consequently, we will still mess up, we will still have bad days, and we'll still have total blocks to self-awareness at certain times, no matter how much work we've done on ourselves. It's an ongoing process. Every day, we get up and we have to remind ourselves of who we are, not who we think we should be or who we're told we ought to be. Quite often, we've been receiving those messages about who we ought to be or who we should be for decades, so it's understandable that we don't get to shed our conditioning straight away. But, in my experience, becoming who you are brings the ultimate reward. We can begin to accept ourselves for who we are. We can reduce the amount of conflict in our thoughts and feelings between what we want and what we believe about or expect of ourselves due to our conditioning. It might not feel like it some days, but we are free to be ourselves. And with that is a beautiful opportunity to seize it and run with it. I'd like to end each episode by talking about a resource or tool that I found particularly helpful. And I thought today I would start with Meditation Oasis. You can find the website at www.meditationoasis.com. And it's a fantastic meditation and mindfulness resource that I've gotten a lot out of over the last few years. The website has articles about how to get started with meditation, tips for breathing and posture and so on. The Meditation Oasis podcast is available for free through the iTunes store. And you can get a range of guided meditations and music tracks if you want to meditate on your own. Just in case you missed the website, it's at www.meditationoasis.com. So that's it for the introduction. For more information, you can visit www.becomingwhoyouare.net and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.